بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So inshallah we're continuing our weekly دروس our weekly classes or lectures. Inshallah post Ramadan. Ramadan we had to take a break. But prior to Ramadan, in regards to the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just to recap and to build upon that, inshallah, we talked about the importance of seerah, we talked about the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, a physical description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We talked about why we should study seerah. And we started from the beginning of how monotheism came into the city of Mecca. And we traced it all the way, or we began to trace it all the way back to Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. Where we left off was where Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam left his family in the city of Mecca, which was a stranded place, a desert, <clears throat> no life, no vegetation, no animals, no humans. Ibrahim والسلام, leaves his family, a young child, and his mother, his wife, Hajar, his, the mother of Ismail, he leaves him stranded in a place where there's no one. And he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The little provisions that they had ran out. And we already went into detail in regards to the story of the incident of Zamzam. And building upon that, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam kept visiting back and forth. Now one of the times when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam came, this is a bit later in his life, in the life of Ismail, where Ismail was a bit older. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts this incident, the very famous incident, which we typically refer to come Eid al-Adha time, where Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says to his son, Ya bunayya inni ara fil manam anni adbahuka fanzur madha tara that I have seen in my dream. Now dreams, the dreams that we have are different than the dreams of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith al-Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, true dreams are in essence a part of prophethood. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even said once that true dreams are one of 46 parts of prophethood. One of the ways that wahi or the revelation was given to the Anbiya was through dreams. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather said in Sahih Bukhari, the, uh, the narration comes that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that dreams typically in the lives of the Anbiya, they mark the onset of revelation. That these dreams were from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they mark the onset of revelation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Dreams are of three types. First dream is that which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second dream is that which is, what you can say, a psychological dream. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put it, what you think about throughout the day, what you're thinking about throughout the night, you eventually see that in your dream as well. My son, he's obsessed over cars. He's obsessed over cars. Uh, he knows cars that I, didn't, I don't even know. A few nights ago, I heard some noise in his room and he was talking in his sleep. And he was talking about a Pagani. Does anyone know what a Pagani is? Anyone know what a Pagani is? You get, no, no, it's Pagani. That's what I thought too first. And then I had to Google it. It, 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 leaves, it leaves a Bugatti in the dust. All right? I had no idea what it was. But what you think about throughout the day, you dream about throughout the night, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And the third type, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam categorized, he said, those dreams which are from shaitan. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first dream is being that which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a true dream. The closer an individual is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more truthful he is in his speech, the more truthful and trustworthy he is in his actions, the more closer he is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more true this individual's dreams are. Second one being psychological dreams, third one being those which are from shaitan. Now the dreams which are of the prophets, they were wahi, they were revelation, they were protected from the shayateen. Uh, this is why the scholars, they agree when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was set up, Um, boys, can one of you guys check with Ibrahim? Let him know that the mic is not working. Ibrahim is here, so he'll adjust it, inshallah. I'll keep talking and you can play with it. Okay. Uh, the sisters are saying they can't hear in the sister side. Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Is it better now? It's better now. Jazakumullah khair. So this is why when Ibrahim والسلام, saw the dream, he was able to act upon it. Right? You say that you know this individual, this man saw something in a dream and he grabbed a knife and he went to go slaughter his son. What type of ridiculousness is that? What type of incident is that? What type of religion is that? What type of God is that? Right? Individual people object. Dreams, in essence, of the Anbiya, they were actual wahi. They were, that was revelation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if an individual sees something good in his dream, which is in accordance with the Qur'an and the Sunnah, there's nothing wrong with an individual acting upon it. But if he sees something which is contrary to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, that is from shaitan, and you seek refuge from, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan, the cursed. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, rather even a bit more, when an individual sees a dream, well, since we're on the topic of dreams, an individual sees a dream. An individual sees a dream. A good dreams being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bad dreams being from the shaitan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever sees something that he dislikes. Let him spit to his left three times and seek refuge from Allah, with Allah from the shaitan. If an individual does this, it will not harm him. Now how do you spit to your left three times? You imitate the action of spitting. Imitate the action of spitting. A dry spitting. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala, who was a famous commentator on Sahih Bukhari, he said in regards to good dreams, there's three things an individual should do. Individual sees something good. He should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that good dream. He should feel happy about it. And he should talk about it to those whom he loves, but refrain from sharing with those who he does not have a strong connection with, or those that he dislikes. And in regards to bad dreams, seek refuge with Allah from shaitan. Seek refuge with Allah from the evil in the dream spit to his left three times when he wakes up, and he should absolutely refrain from mentioning it to anyone. Now, Ibrahim والسلام, he goes to his son, tells him that I've seen in my dream, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me that I should slaughter you. Tell me what do you think about this? And the son responds to the father, the son had a good upbringing, he responds to the father, يَا أَبَتِي إِفَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ 
you do as you have been commanded to from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As they are going to carry out this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan comes. And shaitan tries derailing Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim salatu wasalam. Now shaitan is such an individual, is such a being, which is a cursed enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that shaitan is your enemy. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوَّ Take him as an enemy. Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim salatu wasalam, they picked up whatever they had and they pelted shaitan. Those three places were the hujjaj until now, the jamarat, where they pelt. Those were the three places and the three incidents where shaitan came and tried to derail these two individuals from completing the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now as the story goes, and the story is very famous, so I'm not going much into detail. As he is about to slaughter his son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces that with a sheep. And the idea being that they have submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is what the goal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was. As time goes by, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam goes his way, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, along with the people of the tribe which I had mentioned before. Anyone remember the name of the people of the tribe? The Jurhum. They stay there, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam leaves. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam visits again. As time goes by, he visits multiple times. This particular occasion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him another command, which he is coming with. This particular command is to erect the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Erect the Kaaba. This is such a house that until now, non-stop, people are visiting every single day. People are making tawaf of the Kaaba, the very first house, which was built by father and son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُوا إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلِ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ that as Ibrahim and Ismail salatu wasalam, are raising the foundations of the wall, of the house, they are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, oh Allah, accept this from us. This is a command of Allah, but they are praying to Allah that, oh Allah, you accept this from us. And a rich dialogue, a conversation that they are having with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the building of the Kaaba, and I'll bring this whole circle why we're talking about it or why the, 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 the historians, why the scholars of history in Islam, they talk about these incidents prior to building, as they are building upon the life of the Prophet Wasallam. This was the beginning of placing importance to that particular land. Prior, this was a land where nobody wanted to reside in. This was a land that had no vegetation. This was a land that was not that had absolutely nothing. Nobody wanted to live there. With this particular erection of the Kaaba, this gave importance to the area or the region of Arabia. Other tribes looked at it and wanted to settle down there. That this is the house of Allah. They, this was something which was sanctified. This was something which was auspicious. This was something which was revered. This was something which they would visit. So the tribes around the area, the tribes from far, they would look at this and they would uproot their lives, they would, they would uproot their families, they would come, full tribes would come, and they would try relocating in that particular area. Now whoever custody belonged to of the Kaaba, they became the most superior people of that land. Obviously, while Ibrahim والسلام, and his progeny was there, Ismail والسلام, he married into the tribe of the Jurham. They were the custodians of the Kaaba. It was their responsibility to teach the people the acts of worship. How to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each messenger preached the same thing. And that was Tawheed. There was no idols at that time around the Kaaba. There was no idolatry at that time. There was only oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being echoed. Whoever owned the keys, whoever was a custodian of the Kaaba, that tribe was considered to be elite. 
Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, as long as he was alive, he held custodianship for the Kaaba. As he passed away, his tribe, which was present there, which he had married into, they became custodians of the Kaaba. And it was a position of great honor. Rather, many fights, many uh, competitions, many even bloody wars happened in, 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 to see who would have custodianship of the Kaaba. Constant opposition was met to the individual who had custodianship of the Kaaba. Now, after the Jurhams, there was a tribe of Khuza'a which took custodianship of the Kaaba, after which the tribe of Quraysh took custodianship of the Kaaba. The Jurham, they did not surrender custodianship of the Kaaba willingly. This was something of a great honor to them. They did not give the keys of the Kaaba willingly. They realized that they are unable to defend their position. So what they did, they felt as if they were the owners of this particular land. Our forefather, Ismail, our family members were the ones who built this Kaaba. Our great, great, great grandfather, Ismail, because of him, the well of Zamzam erupted from the ground. So we own all of this. We have more of a right to all of this. So what they did, as they were in a position of losing, they sealed the whole of the well of Zamzam. They took all the treasures that they had, all the treasures that they had possession of in that land, put it inside the well, and they sealed the whole of Zamzam. And they disguised it in such a way that no one knew where the well of Zamzam was anymore. Only after that did they surrender the keys of the Kaaba, the custodianship of the Kaaba. And now, not being custodians of the Kaaba anymore, they thought that we have nothing to do in this particular land, and they migrated away from that land. Now, the tribe of Khuza'a, they became custodians of the Kaaba. Now, the tribe of Khuza'a, there are many things which they had done wrong, even introducing idols and deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship at that time. Eventually, the Quraysh took over. The person who came into power from the Quraysh was the great, the fifth grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the son of Abdullah, being the son of Abdul Muttalib, being the son of Hashim, being the son of Abd Manaf, being the son of Qusay. Qusay was the one who became the custodian of the Kaaba, who received the keys of the Kaaba. Now from the Quraysh, they honored this individual significantly. No man or woman from amongst the Quraysh at that time received this particular honor. Rather, it was such that anyone in that land wanted to get married, that they would have to run it by him. Anyone in that land wanted to erect a building, they would have to run it by him. Any big decision which was made in that land, whether it be personal or it be public, it would have to be run by this individual. A uh, declaration of war could not be made without running it by the leader of the Quraysh. Um, nobody was able to enter your house and stay the night in your house without permission of the leader of the Quraysh. This is how much this individual was respected. This is how much this individual was revered. His request was, so to say, a, a word of religion for them. Now, he had done many things. One of the things that he did in a dream one day, he saw a voice call out to him that go and uncover the treasure. Go and uncover the treasure. He ignored her the first night. Second night, similar dream came to him. Go and uncover the thing which you are missing. Go and uncover the treasure. Didn't pay much attention. Third night, he saw the same dream. That morning, he went out. He went to a particular spot called for something to dig with, started digging, and that was the area which Zamzam, the well of Zamzam had been covered. Now Zamzam, they had access to the water of Zamzam again. Another thing that he did was he built a big hall and a big house 
very close to the Kaaba. And this is referred to as Dar al Nadwa, the house of consultation that they had. This is the same house that he had built five, six generations prior, which Abu Jahl and the other leaders of Mecca used to gather and they used to conspire against the Prophet. The Muslims they used to get, gather at the house of Arqab. They used to gather at the house, the Dar of Nadwa, which Qusay had actually initially built. And the purpose of that was that we have a private quarter, we have a private place to meet, to consult, to make big decisions. Instead of doing it in public area, we have a house, we have a land, we have a place which is in very close proximity to the Kaaba, and we can make our consultation there. Another noble act that he did, many good things he had done. One of the noble acts that he did was that he noted that pilgrims are coming to Mecca. And as they are coming to Mecca, they are wearing torn and tattered clothes. And uh, many of them do not have provisions and food to eat. And uh, not just that, their animals are very thin and uh, bony. They have come from a great travel and a great journey, which has not been easy. We are the custodians of the Kaaba. Allah has given us this responsibility. We must honor these individuals who are coming to visit the house of Allah. So he got the chieftains of the various tribes together. And they came up with a decision that whoever comes as a pilgrim, it is our responsibility to clothe them. It is our responsibility to feed them. It is our responsibility to take care of them. So on a daily basis, individuals were assigned, families were assigned, schedules were made to present the food in the company or in front of the leader of the Quraysh. And it was up to him to distribute it as he saw fit amongst the pilgrims. This is one of the noble action acts that he did. So on a regular day, this would happen. Now, Abdul Muttalib, eventually, this stayed in the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, in the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a part of the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we can concretely say, we can trace it back concretely to a certain degree. The rest of the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we cannot do so. So there's an individual by the name of Adnan, about 10 or 12 generations above, above the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we can trace it back to concretely. After that, it is a bit sketchy. So the custodianship of the Kaaba stayed within the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until the uh, 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 until uh, 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 until the, the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abdul Muttalib. And these practices which had been instilled stayed within that. They stayed within that. So inshallah what we're going to do is now since we're going to get into the crux of the seerah now, these were the preliminary points that we had to discuss prior to talking about the, light, the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the state of Arabia prior to the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now inshallah for the next several weeks we will be focusing just on seerah. Uh, Sheikh uh, Amin will be uh, uh, on... Uh, on uh, uh, He'll be going for Umrah, so he won't be here. So instead of alternating, alternating, inshallah, for the next several weeks, we'll be focusing on the topic of seerah. We'll pause over here, and inshallah, we'll continue with the body of the, uh, the actual details of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah, in the following weeks to come. Any questions in regards to what we spoke about?
Aleyküm selam. So custodianship of the Kaaba, uh, I think, is in the hands of the government, if I'm not mistaken. No. Uh, yeah. So it's in the hand of the government. Yeah, that's why they... Uh, are they related to the Prophet, uh, I, I, I doubt it. The keys with Banu Shayba? I know the the key of the, uh, the the key of the Rauda is with a particular tribe, uh, but I don't know about the Kaaba. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So it's still with them. So the the government has no authority over it. So the government hasn't taken it? Oh, he's, okay. Ah. Right, right, but we're talking about currently. Banu Shayba still has it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I wasn't, I, I didn't know that they, Banu Shayba still has it. Uh, so you, you understood what they said? So there was a particular tribe, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after conquering Mecca, in order to honor that tribe, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the keys uh, of the Kaaba to that particular tribe. The tribe was referred to as Banu Shayba. Until now, they still have custodianship, of, they still have the keys of the Kaaba in their possession. The government doesn't have possession of, of it. Whenever they want access to it, the tribe member has to come and open the, the doors of the Kaaba. Right. Okay, okay. Right, right. He, he kept it with them. Kept it with them. Right. SubhanAllah. I'm surprised the government hasn't taken it. Yeah, the khadim is different than, you know. They're still... So they're not dhalim, you're saying? So, so he doesn't want to be thought of. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 there is, but I'm not sure of the authenticity of it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure of the authenticity of it. The reason being um, that once you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the idea behind it being that you, you know, since Allah being in power, don't discuss it anymore. You know, don't, 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 don't make, don't put more energy or thought into it, right? Uh, obviously, if there's someone you trust or it's something concerning, you talk to your spouse or you talk to someone else, making it public, so to say, is what is avoided. But it's not 
not in the sense that it might come true. No, no. No, no. You talking about it or you not talking about it will not become, will not be the deterrent in making it true or not. Dreams are definitely an interesting topic. There's uh, books which are attributed to many scholars of the past. Uh, uh, one of the famous ones being uh, Ibn Sirin, where they uh, say that you know there was a particular book written. It's attributed to him, but uh, the attribution is perhaps false. But as long as the dreams are, you know, studied within the lights of Quran and Sunnah, an individual can come to a conclusion in regards to it, right? Uh, there are certain signs or certain things that perhaps uh, 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 mention in the Quran or in the Hadith in regards to, you know, certain signs. Yeah. An individual can deduce, right? But that's a, you know, something that, you know, a bit complicated, and uh, people have a fascination uh, uh, about it at times. Is there any, um, is there any sort of uh, dua or yeah, is there any dua that you want to make to potentially see uh, um, uh, seeing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dream, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said that, uh, yeah, he said, uh, whoever sees me in a dream, uh, uh, يراني, he has indeed seen me, seen me, because shaitan can't take my uh, my my shape or my form or my face, right, my surah. Now, the way to see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi the more close an individual is with the Prophet alaihi uh, wasallam, the more likely it is. Scholars mention. Now, one of the ways to you know do that is uh, follow the sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? The way he acted, the way he emphasized things, the things that he said. Uh, another way is uh, sending uh, abundance of uh, uh, salah and salam, durood upon the Prophet alaihi salatu wasallam, right? In an abundance, right? That's something that many times we neglect, right? Uh, uh, sending salutations, peace, blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, these are ways that uh, scholars mention is more likely for an individual to see the Prophet Can you make dua for it? Yeah, you can make dua for anything. You know, there's no prohibition of what you, you know, as long as it's not something unlawful. Um, but definitely those who do see the Prophet are definitely honored individuals, special individuals, individuals who are close The family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did, meaning the great grandfather, the great, uh, great five times great grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some say he did, some say no. Later on, in the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, individuals did. Some say it was Qusay, some say it was Abdul Muttalib. So, again, it's a matter of seerah as I mentioned before, that there are multiple different, when it comes to Quran or Hadith, an individual can concretely say, you know, this is attributed to the Prophet, this is not attributed to the Prophet. This is part of the Quran, this is not part of the Quran. When it comes to other topics, topics such as Sirah, Sirah is in essence history, right? There are many slight differences of opinion at times. So some say it was Qusay, some say it was later on in the generation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some even say it was Abdul Muttalib who uncovered Zim Zim. Jazakumullah khairan. The reason they sealed Zamzam was when the Jurham, they uh, uh, released their power when they were overtaken by Khuza'a. They thought that uh, um, we, are more, uh, uh, we are more rightful owners of this, 
We are more deserving of this. So if we can't be in control, no one else can be in control. Because it was from their family, right? Ismail uh, married into their family. They were, you know, found uh, Hajar and Ismail, etc. So uh, uh, that's why they covered it. And they migrated out of that area. They left that area. They left the area of Mecca. And Khuza'a, they, they had uh, a custodianship of the Kaaba. Eventually, when the Quraysh had it, within the realm or the ownership or the custodianship of the Quraysh, uh, Zamzam uh, uh, was uncovered. Now, some say it was earlier uh, uh, in, in the custodianship of the Quraysh. Some say no, it was later. Uh, it was in the time of uh, Abdul Muttalib. Al-Ma'u uh, Zamzam, one of the hadith being that Al-Ma'u uh, Zamzam, the water of Zamzam, Lima Shuribala, is for whatever individual drinks. Um, dried? Not, not that I can remember. Not that I can remember. Uh, Sure, they had other wells at that time, then. You know, just like now, there's uh, there, there are other wells uh, until now in the different various gardens. Um, so I mean, I'm sure you know they had discovered other sources of water. And uh, uh, there was population in Jidda as well. And Jidda is a coastal city. Right? Um, I'm sure it's written somewhere, I don't know. 